just to greet our bishop and pastor and all the officers on Zoom and all the members and that is here tonight. Just want to greet you in the most powerful name of Jesus. It is truly a blessing that I, you know, can come together in this fashion um, on a break. I took, um, a, well, two weeks off. <laughs> so I'm able to, you know, sit in tonight in a Bible study and not just sit in, but be the teacher tonight of the Bible study. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful unto God for life, you know, so it's, it's one of the things that I'm grateful for, for life, so I can be able to do as well. So tonight, um, I will be teaching a little about fear. And when the Lord gave me this, I, I believe it's, it's a, a ready word for the time and season that we are in. And the topic for tonight is the fear that stop us from doing. And can I, did everybody hear that? The fear that stop us from doing. Um, Ecclesiastic 12, 13. Let us hear of the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Fear. And that's the, that's the topic I'm on tonight, fear. While fear is traditionally considered a negative emotion, fear actually serve an important role in keeping us safe as it mobilizes us to cope with potential danger. So this uh, two fear that I'm, I'm uh, actually read about was actually good fear. These two Bible verses give a clear description of a good fear. But tonight I will be looking at the fear that is negative. The fear that comes to destroy us. Tonight I will be looking at the fear that is negative. The fear that comes to destroy us. Before I go any further, I would like to look at the key words that make up this topic so that we could get a clearer understanding of the topic that the Lord gave tonight. And the first word, fear. Fear is one of several universal emotion experienced by everyone around the world. Fear arise with a threat of harm, either physical, emotional, or psychological, real or imagined. So fear can come from a real event or an event that is imagined. Stop. This speak to an event, action, a process coming to an end, or the state in which someone or something is not moving or active anymore. And that's the word stop. Doing. The definition of doing is the act of carrying out an activity. So I've looked at the three key points from the topic, which is fear, stop, and doing. Okay. Second Timothy 1 verse 7 declares, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. We can see through this verse that fear is a spirit. Did anyone know that fear was a spirit? Fear is actually a spirit. And Timothy give us the understanding of this fear, that it is a spirit. We give fear power by accepting it. So the way that fear can activate in our body is if we give it power. And 
We sometimes we don't know that we are given fear power. But tonight, you know, I just want to allow us to understand that the only way that fear can actually activate in us is if we give it power. How does fear function in our body? Fear acts as a signal of danger or threat which can destroy our life. If we allow ourselves to be held captive by it, for example, you see on the news a destruction of a plane crash. And because of this fright, you allow the fear to stop you from ever taking a plane. So, the news give you an headline of a plane crash. Seeing that brings about fear and that fear start to activate, that spirit of fear start to activate in your mind that it tells you that you cannot take a plane again. Fear, the spirit of fear. First King 19, as we read early on, and this is the main scripture along with others. First King 19 verse 1 to 4. Elijah escaped from Jezebel for fear of his life. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. And when he saw that he arose and ran for his life, and went to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree, and prayed that he might die, and said, It is enough, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Fear comes from what ones see. So fear can come from what you see, what you hear, and what you experience. So this is a three entrance of fear, the spirit of fear entering into our life. By what we see, whether by the news or openly, what we hear by someone, or what we have experienced. Fear can strip you of your strength, your self-esteem, and cripple your ability to connect with your past victorious present challenges. Can I say that again? Fear can strip you of your strength, your esteem, your self-esteem, and cripple your ability to connect your past victories to your present challenges. So the fear that Elijah had allowed him to forget something. So powerful the spirit of fear is, it allowed Elijah to forget something. Elijah, a powerful man of God, found himself hiding in the wilderness. Can I have the picture up if you have that please? So here is a picture of a wilderness. And this is where Elijah had found himself because of the spirit of fear. He found himself in a place that is uncultivated. And as you can see, this is quite rocky. Nothing can be planted there. And that is the place that Elijah found himself. An uninhabited a desert era which is not used by people. This is where fear has crippled Elijah to position himself. Fear can make you lose your true identity of self. That's how powerful fear is. It can allow you to lose the true identity of who you are. Elijah, through fear, forget that he was an anointed prophet, a miracle worker, 
Can you imagine? This is Elijah. A prophet, an anointed, not just a prophet, but an anointed prophet. A miracle worker. This was the same Elijah that called God performed many miracles through, such as resurrection of the dead and bringing fire down from the sky. So Elijah was so powerful that he could bring back the dead to life. And he was so connected to God that he could call fire down from heaven. But fear did something. Fear allowed Elijah to forget his true identity of self. Praise God. Can I say praise God in that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. This was the spirit of fear when it takes over can let you forget the power and the anointing you possess. And this was what happened to Elijah. He forget the anointing. He forget the works that he has performed. The miracle. How he can speak to God and God will hear him. But he heard something from Jezebel that put fear, the spirit of fear, enter him. And he accepted that fear. And he ran for his life. Fear is quite powerful if we give it power to take over. Fear is a destructive weapon that can stop us from receiving our blessing and doing the will of God. So fear is actually a destructive weapon that can stop us from actually performing God's work, doing his will, even getting up to testify. That's how powerful fear can be in our life if we give it that access. The spirit of fear can give you thoughts of suicide. And this happened to Elijah as he no longer wanted to live. And so pray for debt. Fear get, gave him a negative picture of self. This spirit of fear that entered him. Let him lost hope. And 1 King 19.4 as we read earlier. Tell us the negative impact of fear on Elijah. While he himself went today's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush. Sat down under it and prayed. That he might die. I have enough Elijah said. Lord. Take my life. I am no better. Than my ancestors. So not only that he lost hope. But he started looking at himself. In a negative way. He started seeing himself. As the dead. He's no better than the dead. Because his ancestors were already dead. He's no better than them. That's the. Spirit of a negative fear. It cripples your mind. It takes away life from you. It, it's like a, a snake. It sucks the life from your body. If it gets access. Praise God. Remember the spirit of fear comes to stop us from doing what we are purposed to do. And that's what fear does for all of us. It, it comes to stop us from moving forward. From, to, from being active in the things of God or in the things of our life. Fear is stopping us every day. Fear is around us, stopping us from moving forward. Fear can also drive us to compromise our integrity and even jeopardize the integrity of those close to us. So not only you, Will, can be affected, but the people that is around you can also be affected by this fear when it enter your life. Which was the case with Abram and Sarah. Genesis 20, verse 11 to 14. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. So that means she was so beautiful, so beautiful to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, 
this is his wife and they will kill me but they will save thee alive say i pray thee the what my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee and it came to pass that when abram was come into egypt the egyptian beheld the woman that she was very fear the spirit of fear is so toxic it can cause an honest man to lie. Abram was in fear of being killed. So he denied his wife by lying that she was his sister. There is nothing good that comes from the spirit of fear. So as you can see how oh, toxic fear is. It allow you to pass it over to somebody else. To allow you to get that person, influence the person to lie with you, to lie about who you are, your true identity, your true relationship towards that person. And this was the case of Abram. He had to lie because the fear of dying crippled his way of thinking or behaving. And his action changed. He denied his wife because he wants to live. The spirit of fear when accepted will cause you to have sleepless night. Have you ever gone to your bed? Maybe you watch something, you see something or you hear something and you go to your bed. And because of what you see or hear, you can't sleep because the fear of the thing is just playing on your mind. And you are afraid to close your eyes. It, the spirit of fear when accepted will fill your body with negative thoughts and feelings, make you feel powerless, drive you into isolation, weaken your immune system, let you miss out on great opportunity, take away your voice, take away, it takes away everything that is important. You know, sometimes you're, you're, you're in church and you want to say something, and that fear stop you from moving forward. That fear stop you from testifying about the goodness of God. Fear can take your voice. It gives anxiety and depression. When the negative fear enter our body, this is what it actually do. This is the works of the fear when it enter. God knew that we would come upon the spirit of negative fear. And that is why he makes sure to emphasize on the word fear not 365 times. Fear not. And I'm going to actually give you a few of these positive fear not. Because I understand that we are living in a time and a season where fear is all around us. Fear is allowing people to not want it to go outside of their home. Fear is allowing people to just cough because they are afraid of what people may think. Fear is all around us. But tonight God has given me this topic to remind us that he knew that these days will come. That we will embark on the journey of fear. That things will happen. Destructive things will happen. That will allow us to be frightened. To be fearful. And he allow himself in his power. That he is all knowing. All powerful. He knew of this day. And he give us many verses. 365 times. That we should fear not. And these are some of them that I will highlight. That you can go to if you are feeling fearful in yourself. Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. But now thus say the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame 
shall not consume you. What a powerful word of encouragement from the Lord. Fear not. Because these destructive things may happen, but I am with you to them all. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Psalms 23 verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. Psalms, and my favorite one, one of my favorite one, there are many. Psalms 27 verse 1. The Lord is my, sh my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord. So if you're in darkness, he is your light. He is your salvation. You need not fear. This is what the Lord is saying. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right and of my righteousness. Yes, we are living in a time where we can see so many disastrous things happening all around us. And the spirit of fear is all around trying to captivate the minds of God's people. I do believe that God has actually given me this word to empower me. Because I too, I too has gotten fearful. It's a frightening time. I too question, will this end? Because the time is changing. But the Lord, when, when, when our pastor gave me this opportunity, straight away the Lord bring me to this topic. Fear not. The fear that wants us to stop doing, stop moving, stop growing. Stop becoming, stop achieving, stop building, stop creating, stop dreaming. The fear that is negative, the spirit of fear that is so negative, what it does, it sucks you dry of all the energy that God has given you because he wants you to forget who you are. But God remind us that we need not fear because he is with us. And if you have embarked on any fear and you don't know what to do, this is what Psalms 34 verse 4 to 6 said. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fear. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This woman cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. So if you are in trouble of fear, so you just need to seek out for the Lord. Search out for him. Because the promise that he made to us, that he will answer us. He is a very present help in time of trouble. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Because God is with us. Fear not COVID-19. Fear not what we hear or see, because the Lord God is with us. He will strengthen us. He will keep us in perfect peace. And this is my word for tonight. I hope it has been a blessing. And I hope, you know, it has actually given us something to think about. Back to our bishop.